So the boys are back for the fourth year in a row. It's time for the RuneScape Combat Talk. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys. Let me put that down there. Right, so, whoa. Welcome to another Combat Showcase. Uh, got a pretty awesome presentation ahead of us for you guys. So I'm Ad Rahman. Uh, I've worked on every single boss since the release of Virago, uh, and I recently released the Angel of Death. I'm joined by... Um, I'm Mod Pi. I suppose I'll cover a few things I've done. So I made the EOC combat system, uh, Legacy, I made Revolution, Dartscape, and a couple of PP updates that I'm not talking about right now. Yeah. Um, Mod Deck. So, jumping straight into it, we're going to be whoa, we're going to be covering um, a couple upcoming content releases. Uh, so first off, you may have heard about it in uh, Mark's reveals. We're going to be jumping into a mysterious island reclaimed by nature. It's the Lost Group. With the release of 120 Slayer, the top end didn't really feel cool. We only really had the Soul of Arrow creatures and the Gemstone Dragons. So to start padding it out a bit, we are releasing on Monday uh, three brand new Slayer creatures, as you can see here. I went for a very much cute but deadly theme with these, but I also wanted to do something a bit different. So as there are three, the first creature at level 108 will be the best XP per hour for Slayer. The second creature at 104 will be the best GP yield per hour. And then the third one will be a nice balance between the two. So that means when, you're, when you've been assigned Creatures of the Lost Grove, you're able to be, you're able, well, essentially you can go up and be like, do I want GP, do I want XP? Or you get a bit of both. Now, it wouldn't really be a Slayer creature if we didn't have unique rewards. So introducing the new Cinderbane gloves. Now, there's something special about these gloves. They, not only are they tier 85 and they're hybrids, but they also have a strength bonus of around tier 70. So you're not turned off by the the hybrid aspect being toned down. They're also able to apply a passive poison to anything you target, but we already have weapon poison for that, right? So not only are you able to wear these, you're able to drink weapon poison and completely enhance the amount of damage they output. Don't, don't drink weapon poison. Yeah, don't I'll, take that too Sorry, yeah. <laughs> apply, it to, <laughs> apply it to your blade <laughs> or, or whatever weapon you're using. So that's the Slayer Creatures, but that's an awfully incredible environment for just a couple Slayer creatures, or three. So, if you went to the reveals, you would have met this guy. This is Solak, the Guardian of the Grove, coming in at the top end of PBM, above AOD, Hard Mode Yaka, and Hard Mode Virago. Hard Mode Yaka? Hard Mode Virago and Yaka. Earlier in the year, I put out a PBM survey uh, re in relation to group bosses, finding out what kind of loot distribution method... What kind of loot distribution what kind of loot you want to drop from the boss, <laughs> um, and what kind of group sizes you want. With over 5,000 replies, I was kind of staggered by the actual result on the size of group bosses. Uh, it was actually duo mode that came out on top. So not only will Solak be releasing with uh, six to seven man mode, but he's also going to be releasing with a duo mode. So if you can't, we, we understand that, you know, finding a lot of people to take on a boss is kind of an issue. Uh, so he's going to have his own duo mode with different mechanics, and altered mechanics from the original one. Uh, so, you know, if you haven't got enough members of the team, you can take your trusty pal or that random dude you just met at Perif and take on Solak, with drops not changing and not being different to Seven Man. Ooh. Nothing to stop you going in solo, of course, but this time I will not be betting my blue party hat on it. <laughs> Where am I? With Solak, I want to try something different. I really want to push PBM and high-level bosses. So rather than have you know, the usual eight auto attacks and a main attack, uh, like most of our bosses do, you know, they hit you, they hit you, they hit you, they do a special. With Solak, I'm going to be introducing new sub attacks. So they'll be thrown into the mix with the auto attacks. So as the fight progresses, auto attacks will start to kick in. They're not going to be as brutal as special attacks, but they're going to be something you want to look out for. You'll be encountering more DPS checks. 
we, we know that you guys can output a massive amount of DPS. It depends how sweaty you are. Like, you can really push it. it. Depends what gear you have and what abilities you have. So, you know, why not utilize that to our advantage? Let's say, for example, Solak is charging a massive attack. If you don't do anything, he's going to kill you straight up. But we'll put your DPS into check, so you're able to battle down that massive hit to get it just below the threshold where you'll be able to survive and even make it hit nothing. You also have a massive arsenal at your advantage. Like, let's take Intercept Cade, for example. Like, that is a really OP combo. And what we usually do with bosses is we kind of skirt around it. We'll knock your barricade off, or we'll take your intercept away. But for this, I don't really want to do that. I, I want you to utilize all the different things you have. So let's say Deg is pinned by Solak. He can't do anything because he's stunned. But don't worry, XXP VM Lord 21 at the back has got your got your back with um, Intercept and Cade. That's not my experience when I raid. No one's ever got my back when that <laughs> happens. But this could take him away from a really critical moment in the fight. Maybe there's a DPS check at the back, and then the sub-attack kicks in, John gets pinned, and then no one's there to save him. With these sub-attacks, I really want it to change the way the fight plays out, meaning you'll have to adapt as much as you possibly can, and every fight is just a little bit different. With Solak, as I said, we want to do things very different. So you'll have multiple health pools, not just the one, you know, of he's got four million health, let's whittle him down to zero. You'll have to go through one health pool, two health pool, three health pool, and then maybe that unlocks the final health pool. We really want to explore this avenue with new bosses going forward, basically. <laughs> um, we're about to change the face of PVM and high-level boss monsters, as you know it. To avoid spoiling too much, I don't want to go into anything, but it was good to know that Solak is currently in development. He does have a fully playable fight from start to finish, so we're that far along with it. And playtest will be starting in tap as soon as we possibly can. Of course, we can't introduce a brand new boss without new rewards, right? So Solak will be, re re Solak will be dropping the new Tier 92 dual wield range weaponry, as you can see here. So they are visually stunning. They're, they're very themed around Solak, and they'll be very expensive on release. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's, that's more on Solak. Deg, do you want to take us through our next upcoming release? So in 2010, we released our best skill. Um, objectively, you can try and disagree with me, but it's, I've got data, it's proven. Uh, and that was Dungeoneering. Uh, and when we introduced that, we met a whole host of exciting new monsters for the first time. Uh, and since then, slowly, some of them have started to trickle out into other areas of the game. Uh, Calgarians and Edemu. Uh, and we're going to be doing that again uh, this year with Stalkers. So, coming soon, you're going to be able to get a Stalker Slayer task. Uh, and you'll be able to choose between fighting Seekers and Soul Gazers, who will be added to Zamorek's Stronghold. So if you've completed Dishonor Among Thieves, you'll start to gain this new task. Uh, you'll be able to choose between uh, fighting the Seekers or the Soul Gazers, uh, and they'll have the same Slayer requirement as they currently do in Dungeoneering, so 71 and 99, respectively. When you're fighting them, occasionally, a Elite Stalker will spawn. And I know sometimes you don't feel like you're going to bother with an elite monster when it spawns, but you will bother with this one. It's going to have a rare chance of dropping the sneaker peeper pet, which is very difficult to say. And it's also going to be dropping something else that's getting outside of Dungeoneering for the first time. Unless you're a bug abuser. Yeah. And that's the Hex Hunter bow. So, outside of Dungeoneering, the Hex Hunter bow is going to become a tier 80 bow, but when you're fighting a magic user, it's become more powerful. And if that magic user is specifically weak to arrow attacks, it's going to become the single most effective bow possible in that situation. And that's going to be coming soon. Awesome. Right, so it wouldn't really be a combat talk if we didn't have ModPy talk about the actual combat system itself. So, ModPy, over to you. Thank you very much.
Um, that's the wrong direction. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about where we want to go with combat. And while these things aren't directly updates themselves, they tie into every single one of the updates that you're going to be getting soon. Um, and the first one I want to talk to you about is something we're dubbing weapon, weapon type diversity. Now, I've stood on this stage before and mentioned weapon diversity before, but I haven't really filled it in. So when we released the EOC, we took away a, lot, a couple of levers that we used to make weapons unique. The, the ability system in GCD took away attack speed, and the weakness system took away attacks that like stab slash crush accuracy. So, and that what, that what that did was it boiled it down to just like 2H ranged and dual wield melee. So we want to bring more life to the different types of weapons that you're using. Now, a little while back, we allowed halberds and size to make use of their range too when they're pulling, doing AOEs. And I'm not sure, was that, was that popular? Do you like that? Yeah. yeah, I thought so. So we're going to be continuing that work and making a lot more weapon types special. So I mentioned previously the attack speed is deprecated. So what if, spitballing here, don't quote me on this, all right, but what if... A Add dagger. this to Reddit right now. <laughs> <laughs> what if, say, a dagger randomly just didn't incur GCD? What if, I don't know, maybe one day javelins might actually be good? And the age-old debate about whether or not rapiers or longswords can finally, are better can finally be answered, because right now the answer is obviously maces. They've got prayer. So. Um, but seriously, like, we want to start rolling this up to much, much more weapon types. We think it's going to add a lot more depth to what you're actually playing and what you're going to be taking to bosses. But also, when we release something, we're not just sat on stage going, ah, oh, dual wheel range. We can, you can actually get excited about the new tier 90 dagger or the new tier 90 longsword. And it's you know, just going to give you a lot more in your tool set. Right, so the next thing I'm going to talk about affects the whole combat system, everything. And we've been looking at our styles, the styles that we use, and we're going to be improving the gameplay. We think we can do a lot better. Um, so a little bit of backstory to this. When we originally made EOC, we worked an awful lot on something we like to call equivalence. And by that I mean, when we release something for Mage, say, we make damn sure that range and melee get something equivalent, right? Not the same, but equivalent. And that's how we keep the combat system balanced currently. And also, you don't feel too bummed out when you, uh, when you ha are forced to take a specific style for a combat to, uh, for, due to the combat triangle, right? Now, while this is great, what it's caused is all of the rotation between the different sides, different types of styles that you're using, you kind of get caught in the motion, so they all, still, all feel really quite similar. You're just DPSing, right? So what we want to do is we want to make the styles feel a lot more distinct from each other. We want to start ramping up what we're offering you in terms of gameplay and what we're giving. So for instance, we want to ramp up the synergies between abilities. We've done this a little bit, but I think we can do much, much better. We can, we can make you think about your rotations an awful lot more. We are going to be perfectly happy to give a style something that's completely unique to that style. And you know what? We've come to the conclusion that that's OK. It makes that style interesting and unique. And when you're doing mage, you're doing, like, you feel different to be doing range. And I think that's going to be a really great thing. We're also going to have things like effects that fire off randomly in combat that affect your rotations. So you're actually going to have to think about your rotations when you're performing them. Now, in order to do this, we're going to be adding it via rewards from new content. Remember me saying that this would tie into all of the updates. The reason why we're adding it via new content rather than just retrofitting it to the existing one is a question of complexity. Like, this complexity is great, but it's not for everyone, right? And if we add it as part of rewards, then as you play the game and slowly unlock them, you learn as the system goes along. And when a new person comes along, they're not immediately thrown at this complexity. Change page. Um, we've actually already started doing this. So things like mutated dazing shot and salt the wounds, that little interplay we've got that's unlocked for Shattered Worlds. We want to do more of that. We want things to be a bit more interesting. Now I'm going to talk about an elephant in the room. Who wants to talk about four tick auto attacking? <laughs> <laughs> 
So we have a plan. It's a grand plan. Um, so traditionally, we take four tickle attacking. What we do is we fix the bug and go, thanks, right, we've done the thing, we've bounced the combat system. Well, I tell you what, I've got a different thing. What about we don't just fix the bug? What we do is we take what makes Fortech in auto attacking interesting and we support it in the combat system in a properly balanced way. What about we take what makes the game fun and build it into the systems for you? And we won't just do that for Mage, we'll do that for Range and Melee as well. So each one actually has interesting gameplay. Now, I'm really excited to start evolving the combat system into something much more interesting for you guys, especially for those that like to get elbow deep in the combat system. I just want to crank the whole thing to 11 and just show you guys, you know what, EOC can be much better. But, okay, so that's great for those of you that are really like lean forward and really, really love combat. What about for those of you that are a little bit lean back? What about revolution? So, revolution, is actually getting a bit of an upgrade. So, the, now and again, the Combat Council like to troll me. Like, they'll just message me and go, by the way, Mod Pie, I've just released this new stuff, and every time you auto attack, it resets the cooldown on Wild Magic. And I'm like, no, no, you're not using that. And then one day, what we said, someone came to me and said, you know, by the way, Mod Pie, I've just taken Revolution, and I've let it do threshold and ultimates. And I'm like, what? And we all laughed and we said, that's ridiculous, that's OP, that's stupid. And then after a little while, we went, actually, no. We're ramping up full manual, screw it. So, you're thinking it, I'm going to confirm it. Soon, Revolution is going to be able to perform thresholds and ultimates as part of Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> that's not all, though, because... When, when we were talking about this, I don't know about you, but I have thresholds inside my revolution area. So, screw it. We're going to let you resize it. So you're going to be able to uh, fully AFK your Slayer task whilst watching Netflix. But seriously, full manual is going to get really, really good. Um, so that's it from me in terms of like, where we're going with the combat system. What do we have next? Well. So a big thing in the combat, ta blah, blah, combat council is tap and passion projects. Wow, that was always hard to do in rehearsals. Um, so at the start of the year, next Angel of Death was released. Uh, Mod Ollie's Nimora and Avarice was a tap project. Revolution Plus Plus was a tap project, and Solak, who you saw earlier, he started off as a tap project. So tap is a, it's a massive thing for us. We can really push what we want to do in our spare time and get it released. So, Deg, do you want to talk about one of your tap projects? So earlier in the year, obviously, we released Shad World, which started as a uh, kind of half joke, half prototype that I worked on in the lunchtime. Uh, and since then, you guys have been playing it and been giving us some great feedback on some changes that you wanted to ma be made. And we already started working on some of those. Obviously, the anima rebalance went out, I think, maybe a month or two ago now. Um, you told us that you didn't feel rewarded enough for the time that you spent there, so we addressed that and we updated it. But you've still got more concerns. You've still got more feedback we want to work on. You said that there isn't enough variety between worlds. You say that you feel like you're doing the same thing and that you want some more changes. So we're going to add more objectives to worlds. Not always is it going to be slay 70 out of 100 monsters. Sometimes it's going to be find this thing that we've hidden in the level or Defeat this one particularly powerful monster. Something to make it feel like your gameplay has been broken up a bit. We also want to add the ability to more measure yourself against how your friends are doing. We're going to be adding high scores to Shadow World. A couple of different types. So you have ways of measuring your own performance and how you're doing and seeing how you're doing against the rest of the world. Right. So, next up is something I'm sure all of you, uh, well, not all of you, but a lot of you want to hear about, and that is Raids. So, two years ago, we announced Raids 2, and we haven't yet delivered on it. It's probably, it's definitely the biggest piece of unfinished business we have in PBM, right? But Raids has a couple of issues. So, before we jump into Raids 2, we need to make some improvements to the Raids themselves. So you only ever really need to do raids once every two days. And most of you do that at 1 a.m. reset. And that's it. You don't go back unless you're hunting the pets for a final boss. So we kind of want to give you a reason to start doing raids more often. Maybe you want to farm it for loot or 
maybe there's a rare chance of getting Acto at a super rare rate, or maybe there is a new drop table for when you're farming it over and over. We want to increase engagement, give players a reason to actually go. The grouping system itself is also an issue. It's pretty clunky, and it's hard to you know, get everything going, get everyone to ready up, and start a raid. So we're thinking about potentially moving it into the friends chat system or offering support for both. So you can just jump into your friends chat, get 10 people, and go in. No faffing about. It doesn't have to be all improvements, though, right? Dick? No, one of the things that has been suggested quite a few times since we first implemented Raids was adding an insane or gold version of the Daredevil title. Uh, and I'm happy to say that that's something that we're looking at adding. Um, so for people who haven't been uh, reading this before on uh, Reddit or one of the other places it's been suggested, this is a version of Daredevil that requires you to complete every raid achievement in a single run. And we're going to ask you to not leave. We're going to say that no one in the group can die or join late or stand outside or even bank. That sounds pretty cool. We also want to investigate some other things, like lower group sizes, so you don't have to get the massive amount of 10 people to do the raids. The activities you have to do in between the boss, you all know when you do Durzag, you just log out, you go back in, you spawn at Jellyfish, right? That leads us on to Jellyfish. Jellyfish is just this tedious, annoying bit of content between Durzag and Yakamaru, right? No one likes Jellyfish. If you like Jellyfish, the law talk might be more suited to you. There's a big jellyfish section in the law talk, actually. You might not expect it. So we kind of want to give you a reason to actually do these activities. Maybe uh, the jellyfish give a rare drop themselves. So you walk away feeling, uh, damn, didn't get it this time, but maybe next time. Or maybe it gives you a buff to take into the next boss. You know, we really want to assure you that Raids 2 is not, is not dead, essentially. Like, we want to improve Raids, and we want to push it. I think Raids is definitely the thing that, among the Combat Council, is one of the most loved pieces of content, and we all really want to push it. So earlier in the talk, we mentioned that we're adding uh, the Slayer creatures to the Lost Grove, and I talked about Stalkers. Uh, and that's a lot of Slayer tasks, actually. Uh, and there's more people training Slayer than ever now that we've added 120. And if you're a Slayer master like Morvran, you're getting really busy. It's okay, they've come up with a plan to reduce some of their workload. The Slayer Masters are going to get together and they're going to invite you to become your own Slayer Master. <laughs> You're going to continue the journey that you began with Menaphos, uh, working on your Slayer Codex and your player own dungeon. And NPCs are going to come to you and ask you for Slayer tasks and they're going to ask you for what equipment should I bring, what sort of tactics do I need to use, what attacks do I need to look at, and you're going to have to advise them, and based on how well you do, they'll return, and they'll share a little bit of their loot and their experience with you. You're also, as part of being in the exclusive Slayer Master Club, going to unlock a couple of perks. You're going to get mates rates on the Slayer store, and you're also going to be able to say, sometimes not use that VIP ticket. I just say you used it up. The others won't know. Uh, you're going to unlock these perks uh, in much the same way that the Memorial to Guffix perks unlock. Uh, and there's just some of the things uh, that you're going to get to uh, unlock when you are your own Slayer Master. So that's a couple of our tap projects. Or is it? John, we left you out. What are you yeah. doing? So, I've done an awful lot in combat, but there's one thing I've always wanted to do. And I've always wanted to make a boss. I've brought back an old boss with a wildy worm, and I've made more holiday event bosses than I can count. And I've taught everyone on this stage and more people than I can count how to make a boss. But I don't ever, I don't have my own signature Mod Pie boss. I don't have my Virago or Araxor. While I'm working on a boss, that's my current tap project. Now, when I was working on like who should I make into a boss, I wanted someone that's existing in our law, and I, and I was thinking, we've taken down big iconic characters in the, in the past in world events, we've taken them down in quests, 
why the hell have we never taken one down in a in, as a boss, right? So I'm going to introduce you to who I'm working on. And it doesn't get much bigger than this guy. You're going to be taken down Hostilius. So for those of you that don't know who Hostilius is, because he's only really mentioned in law books, I'm going to give you a bit of a backstory. I know this isn't the law talk. Try not to fall asleep on me, but it does go to a good place. Um, and I've got some concept art filling in just to keep you occupied. So Hostilius is quite possibly the most badass demon we have in our law. He's a Chthonian demon, and what, how they get their power is they ingest other demons. And Hostilius has ingested more demons than any other demon. In fact, this guy's size could dwarf even a god. He ruled over the infernal dimensions, but was eventually overthrown. Zaros tricked him for all of his armies, and Zamorak led the rebellion against him with the Avernic demons who were enslaved. Now, by the Avernic demons who were enslaved, Hostilius was left for dead. He's banished in the abyss, left to rot. I think it's about time that someone checked up on him, don't you? So, old enemies have returned to Gilinor. Hostilius is stirring. But that's enough lore. So now I'm going to give you another spoiler here. You might need to kill Hostilius. But how do you kill someone that's so big that they dwarf a god? Well, the answer to that one is pretty simple. You kill them from the inside out. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be crashing into the abyss, jumping on top of Hostilius, breaking your way inside his body during the boss fight, and killing the guy from the inside out. So that's enough lore again. So what I'm, what I'm going to tell you now is what makes Hostilius a bit more unique, right? So yes, it's a cool guy, but it's not the lore top mob high. Why, why should I kill this boss? Well, the first thing is, is the group size. I'm, I'm annoyed with solo and group boss. So you know what? Hostilius is going to scale to the amount of players that take him on. From the get-go, Hostilius has been built from the ground up to be to scale to the amount of players that take him on. So whether it's 3 a.m., you're alone, you want to solo him, or you've just come home from work, you're all on Discord, and you want to take him down together, Hostilius will adjust the fight to however many people take him on. Hostilius, as well, is going to be releasing with three difficulty modes. Now, it goes without saying that Hostilius, being such a big character, is he comes with an awful lot of lore. So the first difficulty mode, actually, is a casual mode. And what casual mode is going to do is it's going to tone things down. It's going to be for the questers so they don't miss out on the awesome lore that we're providing them. It's also going to provide you with your first kill count, so you can get Reaper title, and any Master Quest Cape recourse, rewards that you would need. On top of this, you've also got normal mode, so that is... Just your standard bossing, it's aimed at most PVMers, it's how you're going to be getting your loot. Um, the mechanics from this one is the challenges are only going to be gameplay based, right? So they're not going to be any ability based mechanics. So think QBD level to complexity, not Telos. But the final one, the final one is the one that everyone here is going to enjoy. And I'm dubbing this one hardcore mode, not hard mode, because hardcore mode is a complete step up. Hardcore mode is going to be completely merciless. I'm going to hold, I know the combat system inside now. I made it. And I'm going to make this thing the most difficult thing we've ever thrown at you. If I'm not questioning whether or not this thing can be killed on release, I'm going to make it harder. And if any JMod internally can kill it, I'm going to make it harder. I really want something for you guys to, to shout about. And I really want to show you what a Mod Pie boss actually looks like. Because it's going to be awesome. A Mod Pie boss fight looks kind of monstrous. <laughs> So that is awesome. So we had Solak, we got the Lost Grove creatures, we got Stalker creatures, we got Revolution Plus Plus, we got changes to weapon styles and diversity, and obviously Hostilius. So that kind of wraps up our talk. Um, we want to thank you for coming, listening to us. I want to thank Mod Deg and Mod Pie. Um, we're going to open up into a Q&A now. So if you have any burning PVM questions or PVP or anything combat related, Feel free to ask us and we'll try and answer them to the best of our ability.
Um, all of the combat council is actually at RuneFest. Um, so if you see any of these names on the back of a t-shirt or you want to tweet us, then please do. Um, but we're just going to knock on to the Q&A now. So I believe there's a floating microphone going around. Um, so raise your hand if you want to ask a question. Um, I'm not too sure if it's specific for you guys in terms of mechanics, um, but have you ever thought about changing like the graphics for magical abilities and stuff as a... Um, so the way I remember RuneScape years ago is I'd be using an earth ability and throwing a giant earth ball. Um, what about like a fire earth breath kind of thing? Sorry, what was that last thing you said? So I remember RuneScape having like earth, throwing earth balls oh, and stuff with, with magic abilities. Yeah. What about like changing, so fire breath currently uses fire, even yeah. though you're not using fire abilities, you could be using a water ability and it's still using fire. So it, as, it, as it involves uh, reworking a lot of animations or adding in new ones, we could probably do it for things like dragon breath, like if you can blow air or you can blow like rock or water. But we, there's no way we could do it for the entire combat system. There are so many animations, you would not believe it. Even as Anyone else got a question? Oh, we got a few. Um, uh, hi. Sorry? Can you shout down the microphone as well? Everyone's talking, so... Uh, oh, right, okay, object. yeah. Cheers, um, well, basically, I just wanted to ask, because... Um, Magic and range seem to have less abilities than uh, melee does. Because, for example, you only get um, one basic dual wield and one basic uh, um, two-handed ability for magic and range, whereas melee has ab about like five of them. And I was just, I would just wanted to know if uh, there's any plans for adding more of those basic magic and ranged abilities. So, firstly, definitely yes. Um, so, when we again, when we made EOC. There's two, me two, two skills um, that tie into me melee, and that's why you've got extras. Um, because, obviously, this is RuneScape, right? And leveling up has to mean something. Um, but we very much, since even the beginning of the EOC, actually, we've very much been focusing on mage and range and giving you more, much more abilities. So the things you remember, like Conk Blast and Sonic Wave and those, those came out because we recognized that exact problem. Um, and we're going, uh, as I said previously in the talk, we're going to be giving you more abilities and we're definitely not ignorant of the fact that we need a lot more diversity, especially in the basic rotations of major range. Uh, hello, uh, regarding the Magister boss, the phasing during the kill, is there any intention of fixing it? Uh, yeah. If, if, if it's a big issue and there's a, a, a want and a cry out for it, then it's something we can definitely look into. I almost feel like you could get faster kills if the phasing was fixed. I mean, Sorry? Yeah. 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 Can we get a little Tozzy threshold? Sorry? Can we get a little Tozzy threshold? No, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> That'll haunt me for four years, I can guarantee it. Hi, I just have a question about the Slayer Master title. Um, we're going to give an NPC, or we're going to give Slayer Masters um, a task. We have masks where we can force a task. So if we're a Slayer Master, why can't we just give ourselves a task for something we don't have a mask for? <laughs> like Slayer Master, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear anything. Well. <laughs> Maybe you'll be able to. We haven't gotten that far yet, to be honest. I mean, I'll caveat them with that. Was, you can't yeah. always do that, because I, I believe there's a bit of a balancing issue there. Like, I'll always have Ripper demons, please, but... Yeah, yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's what I mean. I think there was one down this far end. Yeah. Oh, Just no. out of curiosity, for example, if you use some abilities in ranged, like the, the one that hits twice, if you use a monster that can stun, why does the second attack not hit but the first one does? Sorry, what was that? So, with uh, some abilities that hit twice, for example, with ranged, 
if you have an ability that will hit twice, yep. and a monster can stun you, for example, one of the ascension creatures, if you hit with the first ability, the first strike will hit, but then if they stun you, the second strike that should have hit won't. Why does that happen? Because so you've been stunned. If they, if they stun you, what, between the hits? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that'd be because you're stunned. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't stunned on the first hit, you were on the second. Just anticipate. I mean, feel free to come and speak to me about it if I'm not getting the intricacies. After the talk, I'll, I'll happily uh, have a discussion with you about it if you're not quite getting it. After the Berserker Aura update, uh, Essence, uh, rather, Supreme Pots stopped getting the boost correctly with Essence. Is that planned on being fixed? That sounds like a bug. If it's a, if it's a bug, just come see us afterwards. So, so clearly you intend to do something like Fortic auto-attacking. Yeah. Um, do you intend to just add an, like, an extra button for auto attack and like, leave it all in, or like, what's your sort of line so of thinking so the far? The exact specifics of what we want to do is going to be broken down to like a brainstorm, but we'll let you know before we do it, basically. Um, like we've got this cool like, thing we're saying, like, oh, well, like, we call this spell weaving and it'll be awesome. Um, but yeah, that's the exact what most people call it at the moment, so weaving well, abilities. Weaving, yeah. yeah. Um, that is definitely one of the possibilities. One of the possibles, yeah. So we Brilliant. don't have it completely nailed down, but we will let you know before we do it. Any other possibilities just to throw any ideas in the mix? Keep it, you know. Yeah, exactly. Know, like, obviously, like, Mage is fairly, like, it's incredibly overpowered compared to any other it is. style at the moment. Like, we don't just want to give Mage something. Like, that okay. section of the talk I really wanted to, like, Fortico attacking, I spoke about because, let's be honest, it's an elephant in the room, right? Okay. So and I wanted to directly talk about that, but range and melee will be getting cool stuff as well. Like, okay. I'm not just going to. It won't be the same thing. Yeah, it'll be yeah. equivalent to use yeah. our own terminology. Okay. And sorry, one last thing. Uh, talking about Fortic auto attacking, like we have Fortic auto attacking with every ability. So where you switch to a wand and an orb, yeah. and then you switch back to a staff to do your auto, and you just change back like in Fortix. Do you guys are like, aware of that, and are you planning on fixing that as well? Um, so our plan is at the same time that we. So you'll leave it until you want to do the whole update, basically. Yeah, exactly. So okay. basically, we don't like we're notorious for this, and we don't just want to take away your toys and say we'll do it sure. later. We want to do it. All, all in one go and just yeah. leave it as complete. Okay, yeah. thanks. So, with regards to the ability to put thresholds and ultimates on your ability bar on Revolution, yeah. are you going to be put any sort of disadvantage as it is currently stands? Because sometimes you may not want to use your Revolution, uh, your threshold as soon as you hit 50% adrenaline. Say if you're waiting to get to 100% for the ultimate. How do so, you sort of distinguish between whether it's going to sort of use a threshold or an ultimate? Basically, think of the way revolution works now. Lowest thing on cooldown. If you have the adrenaline and the threshold is the lowest one on cooldown, it's going to perform it. It's down to you to optimize your revolution bar and to use the, the other bars or the resizable revolution area to say, I want to do this now or I'm happy to let revolution do it. Mag magic, for example, like I would just put what if I was using revolution, I put one magic at the start. So it's always starting from the first one. As soon as it's ready, it's going to fire off. Uh, hello. Um, are you going to. Um Look into adding things like affinity debuffs for range to perhaps like power it up. Like melee has status all hammer, magic has gothic stuff, like things like that. Potentially that's an avenue we can go down, but again, we don't want to just go straight equivalence. This is the thing that we're exactly talking about, right? You don't want to take range because it doesn't have a debuff. But actually if you're in a group boss, then other people can debuff for you. It affects the NPC, not just you, right? Um, and that's actually a cool thing. So your rangers that might have like Spitballing, don't quote again, but maybe your rangers have better DPS, which takes better advantage of a lower affinity, and the other stuff affects the affinity. So, affinity, for instance, only being on melee and mage doesn't worry me because, like, that's what makes those other two styles cool and range. And what you're saying is range needs something that makes it cool. Whether or not that's affinity, different thing. Can we have planted feet for melee again? Pardon? <laughs> Can we have planted feet for melee again? I don't know. Can we have planted feet for surf again? Yeah, maybe. You can have that or equivalent, probably. <laughs> um, in the 
2014, in the 2014 or 2015 RuneFest, you mentioned about an item that would you could level up with. Um, was that your intention for where Invention was going? Because at the moment it feels sort of like the item level in Invention is just mainly a training purpose rather than something you can be proud to keep, like having a level 69 sword. So with the latest Invention batch, it actually, like a level 20 gives you about 10% 10, 10 more on your all perks that you've got yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, but like certainly harking back two years, what we were like level my X, um, that was definitely a sort of spitballing yeah. uh, aspect of that presentation. The, the actual leveling that we have in game is kind of the where that proposal progressed to. Yeah. Invention was more of like the evolution of that. All right. That looks like it's it. Thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for your time.